Yes, Manchester United 2, Barcelona 1 and United got the job done in the end. It was tense. It was damn tense, especially in the first half. But goals from Fred and a whipping left foot shot from Anthony secured the win for Man United. Like I said, it was a tense game. It was a poor first half, really, from a Man United perspective. But the second half, United got their act together and we started playing some football. We turned up the Brazilians. The Brazilians, with their composure and with their class, turned up today. There's a lot to talk about, man. I'm in a good mood. I'm happy and I hope you're happy, United fans. Let's have a chat about the game. What a game, man. What a game. Bruno gave away a penalty. But but then Bruno also contributes towards the goal, towards Fred's goal. So he's like Marmite as usual. He annoys me, but at the same time, Bruno does usually turn up with the goods. There's, wow, there's so much to talk about, guys. We have to chop it up today. We have to chop it up. United are through to the next round. We've beaten Barcelona. Barcelona. It shouldn't have been this hard, in my opinion. But we did it. So yeah, let's have a chat about the game, guys. Let's have a talk. Before we get into it, as usual, smash the like, turn on the notifications. And if you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Do it. It's a good channel. I'm going to release a video after every game, just giving my analysis, giving my thoughts in the game. I want you guys to get involved. Comment below, give me your thoughts, and then we can start a little community. And who knows, it can grow and who knows what it might become. So let's do it. Let's talk about the game. Let's do it. First and foremost, I'd like to quickly mention the starting lineup and whether you guys like the starting lineup or not. I do you know what I like the starting lineup? I, I, I saw where Ten Hag was going with the starting lineup. I understood why he played um, Bruno out on the right and Sancho in the number 10. He's been trying it and he has tried it before and it worked. It worked towards the end of um, the last game he played and it worked also towards the end of uh, the Barcelona game. And the reason why I think it works is because Sancho in the middle can float around a bit more and he can hold the ball up a bit more, you know. So I understood why, you know. And Weghorst down the middle, same thing. He holds the ball up. Rashford stays on his in his natural position on the left. Bruno on the right. Bruno, one of the issues with Bruno, as we know, is that sometimes he gives the ball away. And in big games, you don't want the guy in the middle to, to have 60% or 70% possession. Sometimes, you know, you want him to be a bit more tidy with the ball. So I kind of understand why Ten Hag, with more reason than I've just given, but I understand why Ten Hag went with the Bruno on the right, Sancho on the left, on, on, in the middle. And plus, it's supposed to be a more fluid formation, you know. Sometimes Sancho will go on a drift on the right. Sometimes Bruno will come back into the middle. Sometimes Weghorst will drop into the middle. Sometimes Rashford would, would um, go up top. So I think what Ten Hag was trying to do was create a more fluid system. He wanted a more fluid system today against Barcelona. The back four, I'm surprised he played. Am I surprised he, he started Aaron? Yes and no. I personally would have started with Dallo. But I get why he went with Aaron. Aaron hasn't played badly since he's come back into the team. He's played okay. Attacking-wise, he still lacks in technique um, and this ability to, to cross the ball, to shoot and, to, you know, to, to attack. But he's very physical. He drives forward. He can he can move forward, forward with the ball. And as we know, he's a great one-on-one -on -one defender. So I'm fine with that. Martinez and Varane seem to be our number one pairing when it matters the most. Of course, sometimes he switches and he might put Shaw or you might put Lindelof there and rotate. But when it matters the most, it seems as if our manager goes with Lindelof and Varane. So that is our probably our best pairing anyway. That, no, not probably. That, to me, for me, that's our best pairing. That is our best in that pairing. Luke Shaw on the left, um, Casemiro and Fred. I think this is where a lot of you guys will probably differ and a lot of you guys might think otherwise. But... It was a right call. Well, clearly, it was a right call to play Fred. I know some people wanted to play Sabitza. I don't think Sabitza should have played today. I think it was a right call to play Fred and Casemiro midfield. Um, I guess you could have maybe played Bruno as a number 10 and started Anthony and played Rashford up front and Sancho on the left. But I don't think even... Rashford still plays best on off the left. And even the goals he's scoring, he's scoring 
by running from the left into the centre. He's not scoring a lot of goals as, as you know, a striker or starting as a striker. He's still scoring most of his goals drifting from the left. So I still think that's his best position. So I'm fine with the starting lineup. So let's go on. What do you guys think of the lineup? Who would you have changed? Who would you have started? I guess sometimes talking about these things retrospectively or after the game, you can argue it's a bit, you know, especially a game we've won. If the manager's won with the team that he started, then, you know, why would he change it? But I had no problems with the team. I had no problems with the lineup. Um, we actually started. Now, let's talk about the game. We actually started quite well for once. And I've said many times that United don't start quickly. We don't start intensely. We start okay in, in the sense that we usually monopolise and do well with... with, with we monopolise possession. We keep the ball quite well when we, you know, at the start of games. But we don't start intensely. Like the way sometimes Arsenal and Chelsea, um, and Man City start. Today we started a little a lot better, and we actually should have scored within the first two three minutes. Bruno, to me, Bruno has to score. Bruno has to score there, and if Bruno scored in the first two three minutes, as we know with football, the whole thing changes. The whole atmosphere changes. The whole complexion of the game changes. Barcelona will have to come at us a bit more. More gaps would have been left. The whole game would have went a whole different way. A whole different way. You know, it would have put us at ease, calmed us down in the anxiety and all of these things. But for me, he has to score. He has to go across the goalkeeper. And I think he might have tried to go through the goalkeeper's legs. That's probably where he tried to go. I don't know, but he kicked it straight at the goalkeeper. But he has to score there. It was a great ball, actually, also by Casemiro. Looking back at the goal, looking back at the goal. No, not the goal. He wasn't. He didn't score. But the chance... I think Casemiro got the ball in the midfield and the ball from Casemiro to Bruno was just beautiful. I keep saying over and over again, that's part of Casemiro's game that is so underrated. And we actually started well, like I said. We started well. Casemiro and Fred, you know, were everywhere. They were running, moving the ball around. Um, and like I said, Casemiro was stepping up into midfield with Fred and I felt good. I felt good. But then the penalty, 15 minutes into the game, 16 minutes into the game, Bruno concedes the penalty. And... We're going to have to talk about this because, yes, it was a soft penalty. It was a soft penalty. It was. But what is Bruno doing there holding him back? What's he? Why is he dragging him back? That was, when I saw that, I was so angry. I was thinking, why? Why did he have to touch him? He was running away from goal, Bruno. Just jockey him. Just parry him. Just keep, just keep with him. You don't need to pull his arm and touch him. It was so frustrating to watch and to see... To see David De Gea get a hand to the penalty. And you could argue, guys, and tell me if I'm wrong. Comment below, as usual. Should De Gea have done more? I mean, it looked as if De Gea got a good hand, a really good hand to the ball. But he still couldn't keep the ball out. And, and to be honest, we know De Gea is not really known to be a big or great shot, um, penalty saver. It's quite interesting, actually. De Gea is a good shot stopper, but he's not good at penalties. Just, but, um, yeah, it's that was it was a shame. It was a shame because before the game started, the media, the press, the fans, almost everybody was thinking United are going to be, beat Barcelona three 0 three one. It's going to be we're going to smash them. This is not a good Barcelona team. They're going to come to Old Trafford and get spanked. And that goal just took the stuff in, took the wind out of the whole damn team. The whole damn stadium went quiet and silent as a mouse, literally. I was disappointed. I was really dis disappointed in the fact that we went one nil down within the first 16 minutes and the crowd went silent. And it just stood there and watched. And I thought to myself, come on guys, make some noise. Like, help the team. But we just sunk. In the, in the first half, after the first goal went in, it is like a boxer punch you in your stomach. The wind came out and the team just sunk. We couldn't string in many passes together. We couldn't really build on any attacks. Um, Barcelona fell back into their shape very, very quickly every time we attacked. We were just too damn slow on the ball in the first half. Too damn slow, too damn predictable. And it was a shame because the whole point of the, the starting lineup and I guess the the direction Ten Hag wanted to go, especially with this match and the way he wanted to set up was fluidity, but we didn't see that. Or perhaps we saw a bit too much fluidity and not enough organisation. Perhaps that's what we saw. And I saw a little bit of that as well, to be honest. So we just surrendered momentum. United surrendered mo momentum to, to Barcelona in the first half and Barcelona, Barcelona felt comfortable. They looked comfortable. And I thought to myself while watching the game, do you know what? 
if something drastically doesn't change in the first half, Barcelona are going to coast. They're going to coast to this win at Old Trafford. But second half now. As I got, like I said, you could argue maybe too much fluidity, too much movements, leaving Casemiro and Fred isolated a bit too much. I don't know. But second half, Ten Hag changed it. He had to change it. Something had to be done because United couldn't, couldn't continue like this. So Ten Hag changed it in the second half. Weghorst came off. He was the sacrificial lamb for Anthony, which means Rashford played up front on his own. Anthony on the right, Sancho on the left. Bruno moved back into his position. And like I said, perhaps a contrast from uh, between the first and the second half, straight away it was a fact that People, we didn't, we didn't have the fluidity. We didn't move around as much in the second half in terms of our positional play. Anthony stayed on the right. Sancho was on the left. Rashi was in the middle. Bruno was number 10. It, there wasn't movement um, and fluidity in terms of interchanging positions. And you can argue that helped us because we just focused on our, our own game. Bruno, that's the position that Bruno plays. And that's the position he knows, you know. And Sancho, that's, he's, he's a, that's the position he knows. Anthony, that's a position he knows. So everyone really played in their position. And perhaps that's why we played better in the second half. I don't know. You tell me if I'm wrong, if I'm right. Um, let me know. But we scored pretty straight away in the first half. And it's Fred again. Fred. First half, like I said, nobody... I mean, he was a bit quiet in the first, in the first half. But second half, man, Fred, this guy. It's like somebody strapped a nuke to Fred and said, if you don't run as fast as you can, as much as you can, the nuke is going to go off. If you, if you, if you lose speed, you know, have you, have you seen the film speed? If the bus, the bus is, you know, has to be driving at a certain speed. And if it drops below a certain speed, everyone blows. Like that's Fred. That was Fred in the second half. He, he, he was, he's the bus, but yeah, great finish. Bruno, He's Bruno's Marmite, isn't he? Uh, flipping heck. It's, sometimes he can be so sloppy with the ball. But when, when he's ready, when he can deliver that clinical ball. And you can't take that away from him. He can do it. And it, if the ball wasn't amazing, but it was just nicely fizzed into, fizzed into Fred. That first touch with his right foot. His right foot. This, this, this guy, yeah. And then smash into the bottom corner. I was like, okay, Fred. Don't do that again, though. Don't use your right foot again because 99.9% .9 of the time when you use your right foot, it's going to roll Z. But thank the Lord, Fred, for you. In the big games, and this is time to put some respect on Fred's name, yeah? In the big mother in games, Fred turns mother up. He turns up. So I don't get why people always doubt him. Every, like, even for Oli, in the big games when he's playing with, alongside Scott McTominay, it was always... Fred played well against Tottenham. Fred played well against Chelsea. Fred played well against... Fred, yes, he's inconsistent and he's not a number six. And when he plays in that number six position where he has to pick the ball up from the defence, it's a nightmare and you get nervous because he's not press resistant. He's not. But when he plays high up the field, when he plays in his big games, he's a flipping nuisance for the opposition, man. He gets involved and today was no different. First half, a bit quiet, like I said. But second half, man, this guy, energizer bunny. Energizer bunny settings fully so yeah good goal and that that goal there that goal there got the crowd hyped the crowd found their voice finally the atmosphere changed Barcelona started getting nervous Barcelona started misplacing the ball and we were just so quick we were closing them down every second as soon as their midfield got the ball Casemiro and Fred Bruno bam closed them down the intensity just grew and this is what I was talking about this is what we needed that intensity was not there in the, in, the, in the first half, but it was there in the second half. And I think the crowd has also a part to play. I think the crowd needs to not be so fearful, you know. But, um, yeah, we got, United kept into the, um, got into the game, grew into the game. De Gea made a save from Kunde um, around the 63rd minute. Then we had a substitution. I remember Saka and Sancho came off for Dello and Garnacho. And that changed the game in the sense that, yes, Aaron was playing well, but I thought to myself, yes, bring Dallo on because clearly um, Anthony's not going to use his right foot. He's not going to use his right foot. Dallo's right-footed and Dallo can cross the ball. 
Dallow can, you know, bomb forward and Dallow's got better technical ability than Aaron does. He just does. We don't need to have a big discussion about that. So, I, you know, and also Sancho was getting, you can tell Sancho was getting tired. So I'll get that. I understand the, the substitution. Sancho was getting tired as well. And I think, or oh, I thought Garnacho would be able to stretch them. And he did. And he did stretch them. And only about four or five minutes after the substitution, we scored again. And this goal, great goal from Anthony. Great goal from Anthony. It was so simple and he was so nice and he was so smooth. He just stroked it with his left foot, like some Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Robin, or Aaron Robin sort of goal. And yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful goal. We started off on the left, I think it was ball to Luke Shaw that looked like he was going out of play. Luke Shaw saved it to Garnacho. Garnacho or Bruno. Bruno to Garnacho. Yeah, Anthony smashed. The crowd went crazy. And as soon as that goal went in, I thought to myself, yeah, I think that is the game. That's the game. Barcelona didn't really have any ideas. We defended well. Like I said, the crowd, man, the atmosphere at Old Trafford was absolutely insane. And it looked like we were just bullying them. In the second half, especially towards the end of the second half, the last 20 minutes, we were just closing them down, clamping them, being, like I said, first the ball, not letting them turn. Like Barcelona looked, they were suffering. Barcelona were suffering. And it was just beautiful to see total contrast from the first half of football and that's why I said you know what we are getting better as a team Ten Hag is doing miracles and I'm going to do more videos and talk about what Ten Hag is actually doing and the difference he's made to United but you know the guy is also a thinker you can tell he's look he reads the game while the game's going on and he's not afraid to make drastic changes he changed the whole top essentially the front four in the second half he moved them around and Ten Hag, that's why I'm saying Ten Hag is a thinking man. And football's a thinking sport. All the best managers now are intellects, whether it's Mourinho, whether it's Ten Hag, whether it's Klopp, whether it's obviously Pep. They're all intellects. They're, football's about this. It's always been about that, to be fair. But yeah, Ten Hag is doing wonders. And like I said, great goal from Anthony. We just controlled the game towards the end. I didn't feel like Barcelona were going to score. Rashford came off and I'm glad Rashford came off. Give the kid a rest. He's been playing really well this season. You know, I always say in every video I have been, I've criticised Rashford when he didn't play well and he has not been playing well. He was not playing, he hasn't been playing well for about two years now. Two years he's really, you know, he's been rubbish. But everyone else has been rubbish. The whole team, I mean, we, we finished sixth last season. The whole team has been rubbish, not just him. But he, he has been rubbish. But this season, the kid's been on fire. The kid's been on fire. Well done, Rashford. You didn't score today, but save yourself for Sunday because you're going to score against Newcastle. The kid went off for McTominay. I think the last action was Varane actually clearing the ball off the line, but I think it might have been an offside anyway, but Varane clearing that ball off the line. The crowd just went wild. It felt good. It felt, it felt like a good game. The crowd, I think, chanted certain songs to De Jong. What do you think, guys? Do you think De Jong's going to come to United? Do you think United are going to go back in for De Jong? Do you think Ten Hag wants De Jong again? Now that we've got Casemiro. I mean, Cas De Jong is not really your number six. Casemiro is. So De Jong is more of the box-to-box -box player. He can, he can carry the ball. But what a game. What a game, guys. This is what we want to see. To be honest, this is what we want to see in the Champions League. This, is, this feels like a Champions League tie in the Europa League. But we won. So Barcelona goes... No, I'm joking. Seriously, the suck. I'm, I'm joking, but um, but I'm not really joking. But I am. I'm joking. Barcelona, man. I'm so, I'm so happy, bro. I'm so happy we slapped these guys, man. I'm so mm. onwards and upwards. I don't care who we have next. Juventus, roll. I don't care. Like we can win this competition now. Barcelona are probably the hardest team left. There's still some good teams in the competition. Let's not take the piss. And look, of course, Arsenal are still in the competition, but. United are still in four competitions. I don't know, man. We're not going to win a quadruple, but we can at least win two. The Carabao Cup, let's slap Newcastle on Sunday and hopefully we can win the Europa League. This is what we want to see. These are the kind of games we watch football for. As United fans, this is what we want to watch. United against the top teams and winning at Old Trafford. This, these are the good times. Enjoy it. Have a good evening, have a good week, have a good weekend. 
The next video I'll do will be, of course, after the Newcastle game. But yeah, love, guys. Let's do this, man. I'm feeling good. I hope you're feeling good. Comment below, man. Tell me something. Tell me something. How did you see the game? Who was your man? Okay, who was my man of the match? Um, hmm. Oh, Fred. Frederick. Casemiro's just solid, though. Like Casemiro, think about Casemiro. He was he gave me like a good solid seven throughout the whole match. Fred was like a you know a five in the first half, and there was like and then like eight or nine in the second half. Well, Casemiro was like a seven throughout the whole game. So I'm tempted to give to Cas, but Fred scored a goal as well. So I will give it to Fred. I will I will give it to Fred. Fred's my man in the match. There you go. Um, but yeah, Ten Hag, you know, he made the changes, he made the adjustments in the second half. That's what managers do. There's some managers out here. You got to appreciate this guy, right? There's some managers out here, <clears throat> Oli, <clears throat> you'll go and watch a whole final and watch it and not make any changes. Watch his team struggle for, for 90 minutes and not make any changes until the last minute or something. Against Seville. Was that Seville? That, the Sevilla the Sevilla final? Yeah. I mean, while our managers our manager will bring on Garnacho, realize it's realize it's not working and bring off Garnacho within 10 minutes. I'm sorry, kid, but I need to win. That's our manager. You know? Let's be happy that we got this guy, Ten Hag. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. Be happy. Let's go. Onwards and upwards. Next round. Who cares? Comment below. Who was your man in the match? How did you see the game? Do you disagree with any of the points I made? Um, let me know about Bruno, Bruno's performance. Rashford was quiet today, but the kid can't, you know, we we allowed the kid today. Sancho was in and out of the game, but he played okay. Anthony changed the game when he went on. He gave them a threat down that side that Bruno just didn't give at all. Because um, Bruno's not a right winger, but Anthony gave them a good threat down that side. He changed the game when he came on. The, back, the defense was fine. Defense played well today. The defense played well. Varane played well. Martinez played well. These are guys are World Cup winners, both of them, Varane and Martinez. So let's not underestimate what we have here in our squad. Thank you guys for watching. As usual, smash the like, turn on the notifications, share this video with your peers, subscribe, join the chosen wisdom. See dubs. It's your boy. Peace, have a good week. If you're not